Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we're gonna be talking about does a higher KV motor pull more battery power out of the battery? Now to kick things off right away, we're gonna jump right to our answer and that is both yes as well as no. And that brings us to our next question then, why? What is contributing to the answer being both right if you say yes or no? Well, let's talk through it by first identifying some battery specifications as well as some motor specifications. When we're talking about the battery specs, we have both voltage that we're interested in and we have the capacity of of that battery in milliamp hour. Now when we talk about motor specifications, the two motor specifications that we want to identify as important for this specific scenario is KV, since that is the topic that we are talking about, and the physical size of the motor. So you may ask, why is the physical size of the motor important? Well, the physical size of the motor, both affects the amount of power that you can actually get out of a motor and it's a good common ground to make certain that we're comparing motors that have the same physical size but alter in different ways. So we'll get further into that when we go into our examples on the right hand side of our board. Now when we talk about batteries, we're gonna get some actual specifications here. We're gonna give an example on the right hand side of the board and we're gonna use these two batteries, a 6S 4000 milliamp hour pack, as well as a 4S 6000 milliamp hour pack. Now I know a couple of you are probably thinking, well, what about the C rating? Well, both of these battery packs are gonna have the same C rating, which is gonna be 45C. And that needs to be specified just because we are trying to compare batteries that have different specifications in terms of our, our voltage as well as capacity because that is what we're ultimately interested in to answer the question here today. Now, in terms of the motor, we're gonna give some specifications for that as well. So I do have a couple motors here that do represent our our specific example, one of them is a 1500 kV motor and the other one is an actual 1200 kV motor. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a thousand because the numbers are gonna come out quite well for us, but it's going to represent the exact same idea. So let's go through and talk about the physical size of that motor. Both those, as you saw, are the same. They're 40 by 68 millimeters. Now, if you don't know how motors are typically sized in terms of specifications, a lot of manufacturers end up specifying the outside can diameter as well as the length, where the diameter is 40 millimeters and the length of that can is 68 millimeters long. That's essentially the size of the motor. Now, when we talk about our first example here, we're gonna go through one where we have a 6S 4000 milliamp hour battery pack, as well as a 6S 4000 milliamp hour battery pack. Obviously, the important thing here to note is that both are identical. The only changing thing in our example is going to be the motor that we use. In one case, we're using the 1500 kV motor, and in the other case, 1200. All else within this specific radio control vehicle stays the same. Now, it doesn't matter if it's a radio control car or if it's a boat or helicopter or you name it. This applies the same way for every single RC vehicle out there. Now, in the case for our 1500 kV motor, we're gonna be operating a total RPM of 33,000 and a little bit of change. Now, our other case with the 1000 kV motor, we're gonna be operating at 22,200 RPM. So you can see there's quite the significant difference in terms of the actual total RPMs that both of these motors are going to be spinning up to. Now the big point here is that if one motor is going to be pushing a lot more RPM than the other motor, and you're gonna have the same load, let's talk in terms of a propeller as it's very easy to visualize. Spinning that propeller at a much higher RPM is going to force that motor motor to draw more current because you're going to need more power in order to hit that RPM. So the answer to this question here up above, does a higher KV motor use more battery power, is a definite yes in this specific example. Now one of the big things that we're getting out of it in return, because you have to balance the equation, is we're pulling more power which hopefully is going to be used mechanically within our radio control vehicles 
to go faster or to move larger vehicles or whatever we're trying to do. We're essentially getting more work done. And that is what we're benefiting. Now, the big thing here to remember is that generally speaking, when we go and increase the KV of our motor, we should expect more power to be drawn. Now, there are limitations. Our motor has to be able to handle it. You have to make sure that you are not exceeding the current capabilities of the motor, as well as the RPM limitations of the motor. So two critical things. And then of course, your speed control and batteries have to be up for the challenge in order to deliver the amount of power here that we are going to require. So now let's move on and talk about example two. So in example two, we have a 6S 4000 milliamp hour battery pack and a 4S 6000 milliamp hour battery pack. Now I didn't talk about this when we actually identified the specifications. However, a 6000 4S and a 6S 4000 are actually going to weigh, in theory, the exact same. So we're comparing battery packs that essentially have the same amount of overall energy inside of them. Same with our first example. Those battery packs have the exact same amount of energy because they are identical. Even though these are not identical, same energy. Now the big difference here is we have our 1000 kV motor on the 6S battery pack and we have our 1500 kV motor on our 4S battery pack. And all else, as like our previous example, is going to remain the same. Both combinations for our power systems are going to run at 22,200 RPM. Therefore, we should expect that both of these systems are going to produce the same mechanical power. And we should also assume that both of these power systems are going to have the same amount of efficiency. For motors specifically, this should in theory be true. However, in some certain circumstances in reality there could be differences here. The power system combination here on the left hand side is going to operate at 22.2 volts and it's going to produce about 40 amps whereas our combination here on the right hand side is going to be at 14.8 volts pulling 60 amps. Now if you were to start a timer at the moment that you spin up a propeller and operate it on this combination you would see that this would last under this power draw exactly six minutes and you would be fully depleted for thousand milliamp hour and you'd see the exact same scenario carry out if you did it on the power system on the right hand side here exactly six minutes drawing 60 amps of power you would run out of battery power and as we spoke about this is going to draw 888 watts for both power systems Therefore, the big answer to the question up here on the board is no. This power system here with a 1500 kV motor is not going to pull more battery power than our 1000 kV motor. We started with two battery packs that had identical amounts of energy and both are going to run out of steam at the exact same time. Now this is ultimately different than our scenario up here is because we're balancing all of the different combinations. The reason why we have kV options and so many of them under manufacturers that have the same exact motor size is because of this scenario. We're able to optimize the power system by selecting the voltage that we want to run and then selecting the corresponding winding from the motor manufacturer to end up with the same overall RPM. Well guys, I hope this answers the question that you guys asked. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.